Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, joining at TiVo today and to hear a little bit about what we do. Uh, we're going to do today a couple of things, go uh, over a couple of slides just to frame the conversation and explain what you do and then we'll uh, jump into a demo and show you the actual product and how we do it. So uh, what is Ativo? Ativo focuses on detecting uh, attacks inside the network. Um, so we focus on detecting lateral movement type of attack, targeted attack, stolen credentials attack. Our assumption is the attacker are already inside the, your network. The reason uh, the attacker are there is that you have multiple vector of entries today and the prevention systems are not keeping that attacker out. So they're not keeping up with the vector of that attack. And when they catch up, there'll be new vectors that, uh, for the attacker to come in. So uh, actually, I'd li like to ask a quick question. Anybody here thinks that their network will not be infected in the next 12 months? All right, we have a winner. <laughs> so nobody, no, I mean, <laughs> it's offline, it's not connected. USB come to mind. <laughs> Um, so, prevention alone is not enough, right? You have to have the visibility. You have to have the ability to see what's going on. You have to need, you need to have actionable alerts, meaning not 20,000 alerts in a day and say, hey, I give you a, a whole, the attack and a whole pile of hay around it. It's like, what's the needle? Where is the needle? Give me that. Um, and you have to be able also to take advantage of the infrastructure that you already have and take advantage uh, and make it work together to your advantage. So this is where we come in and this is how we disrupt the attack cycle. So we're able to detect at the stolen, stolen credentials so that from that initial compromise and detect that as well as the lateral movement inside your network, doesn't matter as that bot is moving inside the network and trying to gain elevated credentials, we're able to detect that and disrupt that attack and shorten the, atta uh, shorten, shorten the time that the attacker has inside the network. So uh, the way we do it is that we're hosting multiple operating systems. We support uh, 10 different operating systems. And on them, we support multiple uh, programs and services, uh, both on traditional network as, as, as well as SCADA and IoT. And we allow you to completely customize uh, those uh, environments. Sorry, sorry, folks. So you not only allow you to customize the content of the systems, but also install your own programs to open your own specific ports, that uh, uh, custom ports, as well as uh, import your own golden images of the operating system to run inside our environment, to, uh, to use as engagement servers. So our VMs that engages and detect those attackers are completely transparent in your network and look exactly the same as the rest of your network. So. The idea is that an attacker somehow gets in and goes after your assets, right? So when we come in, we deploy. We deploy very easily, uh, very low friction, because we don't need any uh, customization of uh, the network, redirection of the network, traffic flow. We are not in line. We are not looking at signatures. We are not looking at... Um, uh, logs and data and traf network traffic. What we do is to, uh, connect in a trunk port to be logically part of the different VLANs. And when we are part of those VLANs, we deploy our engagement servers. And now the attack surface for the attacker looks something like this. And as also what we do is, since we have those uh, IPs, we deploy deceptive credentials on the real assets, on the VMs, on the servers, on, on the endpoints. And this is not an agent. It's simply deceptive credentials 
data that you are writing in the hard drive, in memory, and to trick the attacker. So now when you have an endpoint or you have a VM that gets infected and is trying to go attack other targets and get to your data, he'll get to our credentials, use them, and they'll drive them straight to us. And we'll detect the infected node. Not only will we detect the infected node, but we give you very rich forensics around what that node, what that attacker is doing. And give you all the tools, all the information to go do remediation. And, and we also can send that information to your NAT, to your firewall, to the other devices on the network to quarantine and block that device from exfiltrating any data. Right? So the way we do we do all this is um, a very high level uh, block diagram of our system, the logic around it, is that at the base level we have a big data, uh, database and, on uh, and system. And on top of that, we're running our VMs, right? And those VMs are logically together. It doesn't matter where they are deployed. And, uh, when, uh, and they're uh, instrumented. So any Anything that touches them, anything that talks to them is caught from the initial reconnaissance, from the initial ping to a payload drop or deletion, registry changes. Think of it as a black box on a plane. All that data is sent to our uh, database, and we have a correlation engine that looks across at all that, those events and uh, associate, it, associate all the events together as an attack. It doesn't matter if it's happening against one VM or multiple VMs. So now the method of propagation inside your network is captured. And we tell you how that bot is moving from one VM to the other. All that within our environment. So we don't let the bot and attacker use it as a platform to attack your network. The other thing we do is that when that uh, attacker tries to communicate externally to uh, the, uh, sorry, the malware, the bot, try to ex communicate externally to the attacker, we actually hijack that traffic and send it to a VM that masquerades as the attacker called the uh, sinkhole. We capture the URL of the attacker to complement your blacklist and to block that attacker. Also, you have, by default, uh, that VM is uh, contained, but you have the ability to turn it into a proxy, into a gateway. So now we're doing a man-in-the-middle attack on the attacker. So we're capturing all the traffic that is generating. We let that traffic go to the attacker on a dedicated port or VLAN. And if it's a dropper downloading malware, we capture the signature of that malware, and you know what is going down. If it's a command, we capture that. So you have the full visibility of what's going on, right? And of course, we all the alerts, everything, uh, we interface with your SIM, we send all that to the SIM, right? So uh, for also for the credentials, the way we use the deceptive credentials are used is that you push them on your endpoints, right? And these are credentials, uh, fake credentials, bogus credentials. Nobody is going to use them, nobody should use them, and they will fail if used on the network. But an attacker doesn't know that. So from in terms of density, it's highly dense uh, de deployment. We put them on the endpoint. And if used, one of three things is going to happen. One is that the attacker is going to use them and come straight to us. In which case, easy, we tell you exactly, we'll give you all the forensics and tell you what they did. Two, they can use them to attack the actual servers in your network which is also no big deal, because that at login attempt is going to fail. It's going to be logged in your SIM. We communicate with the SIM, query it for the failed login attempts, and any use of those, our credentials anywhere on the network is going to be caught. And three, since we're creating the credentials, we can also create signatures for the credentials that we give to uh, complement the signatures in uh, the firewall. So now, if the bot tried to exfiltrate that attack and send it to the attacker, 
the firewall has a chance of blocking that exfiltration attempt because it knows what it's looking for. Right? So now what, not only do you have real-time detection, you have actionable alerts because nobody's supposed to talk to us. There are no real services, nothing valid that's running. What's going on with this? <laughs> that's running inside the, the system. So if somebody touches one of our IPs, um, he's guilty. So we give you the needle. We give you the forensics. We give you the visibility. And we deploy on multiple platforms. And we are available as a VMware. We are available uh, for OpenStack, uh, AWS, as well as an appliance. Um, and uh, Microsoft Azure is coming next. For OpenStack, uh, doesn't matter which uh, infrastructure layer you have, which hypervisor, which controller. Um, we live in, um, in the application layer, right, in, in the VMs. You import our management VM through your heat or orchestration template, and then you use it to deploy our VMs. And the way you deploy them is that you can deploy them across tenant, in tenant, um, in, as their own tenant, right? And uh, those VMs are talking back to our management server and giving you this one pane of glass to look, and, uh, to look at the attacks. And if you have multiple uh, instances of the management servers, basically multiple virtual appliance, we have a central manager that can aggregate from multiple machines and look at, the, at those alerts, uh, unless you want to get everything to go to your SIM. So uh, the other uh, feature that we help with is the crypto locker attacks. And um, I promise, last slides before I jump in the, <laughs> in the demo. So the way we help here is that part of the credentials that we deploy, we also deploy uh, map drive. We're able to deploy uh, map drives to our system. So now what, when patient zero get infected and in, uh, encrypt that uh, machine, it'll go after the map drive and come and encrypt us, which is great news for us. We actually like that. So <laughs> what we do is we detect the source of the attack, patient zero. We quarantine it, and we raise the alert, and we recover automatically. So there's no need to worry about us or what we just destroy that VM and rebuild it up. So now that crypto attack that potentially could spread across the network is limited to one machine. OK? So uh, this is actually the, sample, the ransomware that Black Energy, that uh, the Ukraine Energy um, got hit with. We ran it on our system, and you see what the output. So um, I believe this is, uh, oh, one more, one more slide. So basically what we do is turn the whole network into a trap. We turn your endpoints, your data center, your uh, devices, uh, local data center, uh, cloud, doesn't matter. We turn every asset you have into a trap that's helping you to close that window of opportunity and uh, to find that infected system and those back doors on your network. OK? So uh, since we have about five minutes left, six minutes left, I'm going to quickly jump into uh, the demo. And uh, walk you through some, some of our features. The idea behind uh, Ativo is that uh, the user experience behind us is that it doesn't matter what flavor you have, it's the same user experience. It's the same functionality. It's the same value. So uh, AWS, VMware, OpenStack, uh, the actual appliance, they all look the same. The only difference is in the method of deploying the virtual machines. What you see on the left-hand side is uh, visibility on the network because we're deployed on that trunk port. We're able to collect information from 
the broadcast and multicast packets. So we give you uh, information about uh, how many IPs, how many are DHCP based, the MAC address associated with the IP, the OS associated, and so forth, and uh, the different VLANs we see. Uh, we also give you attack information by phase, by uh, severity, by timeline. And the most important thing is uh, these little guys, these are the, the attackers or the infected machine inside the network that you'll need to go address. Uh, and everything here is um, clickable. So we give you the IP addresses, we give you the type of attacks that uh, we saw, against what service, against uh, which OS. So let's click one, you click on it, we drive, uh, drill down, hopefully. And uh, now you have a view of that one machine, the type of attack it did over uh, sequentially. For each one, you have the ability to drill down. So here, this endpoint did a file drop against us. We give you the signature of the file, the time, uh, and of course, for all of them, you have the ability to generate uh, STIX report, IOC report, CSV report, or the actual PCAP for, of the actual engagement to replay it. So uh, the other ability for forensics that uh, we provide with all this is the ability to drill down, uh, to capture, to actually take a snapshot of the VM, export it out, to do uh, deep forensics on the VM. It, and that captures not only the VM, but the memory uh, dump as well. So uh, in terms of uh, variation, uh, configuration deployment is very straightforward. Um, you basically select uh, which host IP, the username, password to deploy that initial VM. You deploy a private network to connect the engagement VMs. And then uh, to deploy the VMs themselves, uh, it's really straightforward. You just select the version of OS you want to deploy uh, on which subnet and the number of IP addresses you want to deploy. You click, say OK. The system creates the rules for you. You're done. So deployment of the system, half an hour in real time, in the middle of the day, without disrupting traffic, without worrying about uh, other departments. It's very, very straightforward. We actually have done that in, uh, at customers, financials, healthcare, others that uh, goes, it literally is this complex. So since we have a couple of minutes, love to take a couple of questions from if there are any clarifications. Yes. Yes, everything is available through APIs as well. And uh, actually, there's uh, one feature um, Well, around that is that since we have the VMs, you have the ability to specify those VMs to be um, analysis VMs. So you can drop a payload on the system through email or manually, and we give you the full view of uh, what that looked like. Actually, here, let me show you. Uh, that, so tell you what that uh, payload did. So you can see, uh, even if it's a polymorphic uh, attack, it doesn't matter, we generate the signatures. Uh, so you can see here, we're giving you the SHA-1 of the I initial payload. We can uh, we check against virus total and tell you if it's a zero day attack or known attack. Uh, we give you the process ID, uh, uh, the, what this malware did by process into in registry, in, uh, in file deletion and so forth. Uh, screen capture of what it did, as well as uh, a description, CNC information where it tried to reach and uh, the services it used as well in this particular malware it didn't do, but we also give you the lateral movement method, which services it used against which OS it went to. So if you have an infection, now you can take a report like this and go uh, for remediation, right? You, 
So we have actually a customer who got hit with a variant of Quackbot, and uh, running uh, using our system, they were able to generate uh, the report needed for uh, remediation. And after fighting the malware for a couple of weeks, we, they were evaluating our stuff in the system, our system in the lab. So they dropped it on us, generated this report. And uh, within a couple of days, they uh, found 65 systems, infected system in their network that they remediated. It's a great uh, webinar, actually. It's on our website. I encourage you to go listen to it. OK, thank you very much.